Um, you have your uh, your video up. I do not see it. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and then just do the solo thing first. And... Okay. All right. Let's see. We are live, and boy, are we alive here in Atlanta after that game. Oh my goodness! And not only that, but we got AJ waiting in the wing, and boy, is he <laughs> nice and cold. There's a cold one out there tonight, folks. Definitely remember to get your uh, get your faucets just to drip. Do a solo. Um, cause uh, yeah, Indeed. here's a freeze warning. Keep it drippy, just like Atlanta. <laughs> Hey, Elliot Bleven, how you doing? Hey, Gavin. I am doing fantastic. Woo! Drinking a nice cold one right now, AJ. How does it make you feel? Oh, man. Uh, you know, it's this, this fuzzy feeling definitely makes it a lot better to be out here. And uh, outside the bends in like 29 degrees. So, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you say we never did anything for y'all, we definitely, <laughs> <laughs> we definitely are braving the, uh, the elements out here for y'all. Yeah. So. Thank you, Gavin, it, for the donation. The Make it rain app. ATL. Absolutely. Oh, oh, cheers, man. Thank you. I'm going to use that to buy myself a coffee after this. <laughs> man, I don't even drink coffee and I'm going to need it. That's for sure. Hot chocolate, <laughs> something. Sheesh. Oh man. Oh. Wow. Like I yeah. I am like on another freaking level today. Like this is Oh yeah. On another oh. level. This is insane yes. what we saw today. I mean oh, unlike yes. anything I was expecting. Cheapers mm -hmm. creepers. I mean we knew that Portland was a you know, weakened team, but uh yeah, they looked like a JV team out there. They yeah. were chasing shadows. They uh I mean Really, you could have done anything about it. The free kick master class. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> at this point. How far is too far out? Yeah. Like we know, we know how close too close is. Unfortunately, uh, he missed a, a little bit of a sitter uh, in the six, six yard box. But I mean, oh, that uh, I mean, was. Pretty really far out else. there. I'm watching this. Uh, okay, a couple people. Oh, one second. We got a doing... a baby screaming in the background. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. But incredible scenes at the bench tonight. I mean, it's just this this wonder boy, this wonder kid is going off. Two goals and two assists. Could have had more. I mean. Yeah, and then Yakumakis also scoring his first goal. Uh, well, Sorry it's just that. and then Wiley, Wiley, what, what a boy. He, uh, yeah, I mean he's proving all his uh, his doubters that he can't play on the wing. Wrong. Yeah, I mean he's looking like Derek, a tried and true Derek winger. Etienne. Exactly, Derek Etienne has uh, got his work cut out for him. Yeah, to he. Get Side right now. In no such way has Derek Etienne made a good, convincing bid for him to start over Caleb Wiley. Uh, quite the contrary. Um, I mean, granted, I would like to see Derek start just to see like what kind of opportunities he gets afforded to that some of the other players are giving Caleb and see if he can capitalize in the same way. But I don't know. I mean, right now it's looking like the Caleb show, and I'm here for it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, uh, there's, ooh, there's a potential, obviously, I mean, it's it's one of these where uh, we're playing these overloads perfectly and allowing him the space to, to operate. And uh, as well, you know, uh, playing on the counterattack, I mean, it's as clinical as a counterattack as you can get. I mean, Thiago Almada on Caleb Wiley's goal, I mean, beating his man in traffic uh, to get to the ball. One. And he's probably one of the shortest guys on the pitch. So yeah, that ball uh, that he wins, I mean, it's yeah, like it's incredible that he uh, yeah, he's able to use his physicality, which you can see. Yeah, there's been some training photos where he's been uh, he's been working out those guns, <laughs> and it's it's working. I mean, he uh, he bodied his man 
And then he uh, was able to find that tasty, tasty through ball. Caleb Wiley just did the rest. I mean, his Caleb through Wiley for striker. Just know? like Mark, we, we don't have Mark here tonight, but I feel as though because he's not here, I have to say what he would say, which is, boy, is his through balls visionary. Like his through balls oh, are yeah. on another level. They are the MLS is not ready for this kind of guy. I like. Uh, it's interesting. We didn't see a lot of this. I mean, you saw a little bit last year, um, but it, this is like you didn't have even, as many runners. That was the yeah, issue. exactly. They didn't he didn't see the the line for them, and now there's there's runners making runs, and boy is Kayla making those runs. So, and then we could we, oh, all, yeah. we also have to talk about my guy Giacomakis. Scoring his, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think uh, Gio might have more off goals called offside than like <laughs> most strikers in the MLS right now, which is hilarious. Oh, man. He was playing on that last man uh, the entire night, and yeah, it didn't like every single time work out for him. But I mean, it definitely like that was a very well taken goal. Um, hit with too much pace for the keeper to uh, to do anything about it. But, oh, man, I mean, yeah, there was other chances. It's like, dang. It's, uh, I mean, he's going just a little early. He's, he's not, you know, curving his run early enough. But uh, Yeah, I mean, they're not exactly or, you know, linked up uh, totally yet. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tiago's going to need a little bit to get an appreciation of Gio's mm-hmm. runs, but it's coming. And it when it's going to, uh, yeah. when it arrives, it's going to be disgusting. Oh, yeah. And basically, all three DPs for tonight, it's... It's a thing of beauty. That's I what mean, you want to see. Yeah, you know, it, it is one of those things where, yeah, uh, last season we rarely played with all three of our DPs. And this season we finally start all of our DPs. And this is what happens. 5-1. I'll take it. I mean, the only mar is the lack of a clean sheet. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely it, a little bit where... What do you think? Do you yeah, think Guzan should have uh, gotten to that? Uh, I think it's allowing, like, Gutman allowing him uh, to get the cross, even even if it's a, a weak foot, but he basically stands it up, and it's, I mean, it's that's just like, too, too dangerous of That's, an like, the third so. time he has done that. Like, he goes to try and block a cross, he gets beat, guy puts it in, guy gets a header in or gets a, a foot on it, and it goes in. That's, like, the yeah. third game this year that that's happened to to Gutman. I feel bad for him because he's putting in so much work everywhere else and yet he right. just keeps being on the wrong end of these these extremely good attacks that just happen to result in another team scoring. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, it's like it's like I want I was thinking like earlier, it's like, well, what were the problematic plays of this game? Like, where do we break down? There weren't too many of them. But one of the big ones was Gutman and it's just like it sucks cuz everyone did so well and he did so well outside of that one thing. And I mean, in this league, yep. one thing can kill you. So, but luckily, we scored enough goals that it just doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. And uh, yeah, you know, going into the the second half, uh, I mentioned on Twitter, you know, a two nil uh, scoreline is one of the most dangerous scorelines, if not the most dangerous yeah. scoreline. Yeah, most uh, dangerous in lead in sports. Or soccer. Yeah. So I mean, it's that. It's like you know, there could have been a malaise it could have been a like uh you know just resting on laurels but this team went and attacked more they uh put this team to the sword and we were scoring goals for fun yep like when was the last time we scored goals for fun i can't remember yeah 2019 i I think maybe yeah it's been years so yeah it's it's definitely this is uh, this is definitely hopefully a marker down as stamping to the league. Hey, Atlanta United, we we're going to make some noise, and hopefully this is the start. Mm-hmm. Hopefully this is just a taste. Obviously, very good scoreline, weakened team, Portland. I mean, honestly, they weren't really that poor i think we were honestly just that much better than them yeah like they you know because they were still pressing well and i mean yeah we we just nullified whatever they they were trying to do for the most part yes boy i mean it's it's a as comprehensive as as a win yeah 
like I said, or, that's uh, right, Gavin. Like a few minutes ago, like ah oh, man, we I lament that that clean sheet because I think that's where we could have, uh, yeah, that that would have been a really big defensive boost uh, to our our defensive line because yeah, that's still that's still a weak point of ours. Like we still need to, uh, you know, and you know, work on that aspect of our game. But uh, I mean, the pieces are there. It's just uh, not switching off in moments in the match. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, and that's the thing too is our backup left back is playing left wing, so there's not going to be a whole lot of pre for uh, Andrew Gutman. <laughs> I mean, it's just going to be yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, like but, you know, the fact that he's running. All, I mean, it's. I feel bad because it's like he's he's probably gassed at the point where he has to then be called upon to be the defender there. And I, I get it. Yeah. Like it's, he can't, especially against like a DP level player, which happens often. Um, you know, it reminded me of the, yeah. uh, the San Jose game. Um, so like, you know, it's, it is what it is. As long as we're again, putting in <laughs> an incredible deluge of goals, it's these types of things are forgivable. And yeah. So Elliot and Gavin, you, you saw a little bit of the preview for later. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a wheel of destiny at the end of the, uh, the stream. And you didn't get to see what's on it yet. You'll just get to see kind of a preview of who's going to possibly be on it this week, which is just me or AJ. Uh, but you'll see the, the real uh, selections for what we have in store for you um, on that wheel at the end of the stream. So stick around to see what uh, we may make AJ do to embarrass himself or me. So we'll see. Yep. So, uh, yep, definitely, uh, you know, get those uh, get those comments in on some stuff that you might want to see in the future, too, of uh, us doing challenges-wise, all that, uh, whether it's soccer-related or not. But lots of uh, lots of fun things to come. So, yeah, we're, we're very, very excited. Yeah, so let me read some comments, and then, you know, if you guys have any comments on the uh, game. I mean, yeah. Oh, that was a real train horn. There we go. Yeah, and yeah. AJ is Definitely in the freezing weather tonight. What's that? <laughs> oh man, my I I keep having to switch hands, putting it putting them in my pocket. I should have brought gloves or hand warmers, something. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, whew, I am braving this <laughs> yeah. uh, this weather for you guys. He's our senior correspondent guys. on the ground, just like I mean, he used to work for the <laughs> the Weather Channel, so I mean, it's uh, he's used to being out in the weather, trying to deal with all this stuff. Um, but so anyway, uh. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into a little bit of this. So let's see. Eddie Ruiz says lethal counterattack, great in build-up play. We'll miss um, Almada next week, though. We're gonna miss like six players next week. It's gonna be a rough week. We'll uh, talk six about or that seven players. Because yeah. Abram is also out. Oh really? So, wow. Damn. Yeah, he got uh, he got called up. So yeah, That's we're uh, we're probably gonna rock sure. a uh, yeah a Juanjo Parata Noah Cobb uh, type of center back pairing. So that will be, that will be fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, how yeah. many LA two players we sign? And I, I'm interested to see how much the confidence carries over to either like a new crop or a you know, uh, the the depth that we have. Uh, if the you know the first team's confidence boils over to the second and sees uh, them kind of right pull yeah, it up. I mean, that's the thing. It's like our understudies. Yeah, our that's infectious. Be out too, a bit. Yeah, I mean it's infectious. The confidence when you're on a winning team, it's 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 just you know if yeah. they get punched in the face early though, I think that they might hang their heads and we might see some ugly stuff. But we'll see. Um, let's look at some more. Yeah. This game could have had more goals. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean Eddie says it should have <laughs> won do. ten to one. Missed a lot of chances. We did. There were quite a few chances. I mean, Aruju comes to mind with doing typical LaRouge things with putting it, you know, skying it over the crossbar and, and hitting it wide of the net. Um, but, you know, at least he got his goal. I mean, he's good for like one in five, it seems like, at the rate he's going. Right. And Gutman almost had a couple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you had a uh, Tiago had that sitter. One. Yeah, Tiago had a sitter. I mean, yeah, honestly, it could have been 10-1. <laughs> That's, yeah. I mean, it could have been... We could have hit a touchdown on them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that would have been that would have been quite the uh, quite the scenes. We uh, we maybe would have gotten a uh, 
a Darren Eels, you know, throwback. Him <laughs> posting something on social media if uh, if we did that. That would be or awesome. Or we'll see. Uh, yeah. Or we'll see what uh, our new CEO would have would have done. Yeah. But um, because I, I think he's he's definitely a little bit more. Uh, Does he have a Twitter? Does Garth have a Twitter? Scenes. I don't think Garth uh, Lagerway has a Twitter. I, I haven't seen it. But, Neither have I. Uh, well, if he get, if he makes one, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be the first like, to know when we tell you. Right. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, no. I mean, he seems yeah a little bit more uh, yeah more reserved than a uh, than a Darren Eels. But I mean, uh, you know, he's implementing the uh, the analysts, the data people that uh, you know just make us stronger. So you know. Uh, it's already, yeah, a very, very good start. Undefeated. An undefeated. undefeated start to Sounds nice. Ten points. Yeah. The best start in Atlanta United history. Wow. Yeah. So let's see. We got a lot of comments coming in. Um, I mean, oh, should we? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a freaking win. Almada with a brace and Wiley with another one. I'm liking what I'm seeing from this team. Um, let's see. TB Flowers says some great passing. Yeah, quickly Wiley pushing. With three goals in two games. Yeah, he's been going. I, I don't know if it's sustainable for him, but man, I really hope so. Because if it's sustainable, he's not going <laughs> to stick around either like Almada. Yeah. Uh, so some TB Flowers is some great passing, quickly pushing the ball around the pitch. Good movement off the ball. Yeah, the the movement off the ball, especially yeah, one touch is huge. passing. Yes, right. the quickness, the urgency. Players getting into the box. We're being opportunistic, looking somewhat like seven 2017 2019. I agree. West the King says we are back. Flowers follows up and says Gigi is no worse than Joseph was uh, when it came to always being offside. Hopefully they'll adjust. Like we said at the beginning, we think it's just a bit of timing and in, in relation to tiago and kind of tiago and some of the other players learning uh gg's timing i think that it'll get better um and, and you know what i'm okay if if he is making those threatening ones because that really stretches the back line keeps them on their toes and they're going to make mistakes they're going to slip up and hopefully geo can punish them so yeah because that's the thing it's like they're going to continue to step up uh thinking that they can catch them offside and then well, you know, he's gonna he's gonna curl his run, uh, right? You know, at least once or twice, and uh, yeah, he, he he did it once this match, and I think yeah, this bodes well. This bodes really really well because he's that type of striker that looks like he could be a fox in the box, but also uh, you know a guy who can um, you know kind of involve himself in the play as well. So, I mean, yeah, it's uh. Again, as comprehensive of, as a win as it can get. And it's that. Like, you know, Gonzalo Pineda, he is now the manager, head coach, of an Atlanta United squad that has the best start to a season. I mean, should we <laughs> say that Gonzalo Pineda uh, has put a marker down to... Uh, well, his haters. I would like to say that, but apparently, I don't think I don't think you'll ever get some of those people on board, even if he wins us the cup. I just think they just have their op opinion; they're going to stick with it. And you know, stubborn as a stubborn does, so um, it, it is what it is. <laughs> some people are just not sa savable. So, yeah, I mean, and there's that. There's there's also this. It's like when Tata was, uh, you know, our manager. Or head coach, he also got some hate too. I mean, yeah, uh, some yeah, people never no, be no, happy. No head coach is perfect. Yeah, no, no head coach is perfect. Uh, you know, we remember when Tata Martino, he uh, he probably took off <laughs> some guys too early in our uh, 2017 playoff run, um, where yeah, we probably should have kept some penalty takers. Uh, our 2017 playoff run where we got shushed to death yeah. by Adam John. Yeah, yeah, that. I was at that game. That hurt. Uh, <laughs> I know it, it did hurt. Yeah, I was definitely. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was shaking my head too. Yeah, but um, and it's that. You know, apparently they didn't practice penalties before the uh, before that match too. So, you know, um, not every coach is perfect. 
and really no coach is perfect. You look at Pep Guardiola, like he makes plenty of overthinking, tinkering things in the Champions League. Pep Guardiola, you mean the the, uh, the Liga MX veteran? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was a part of a Liga MX team at one point. Oh, really? That's true facts. I learned that today. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's I missed that part of his history, but um, <laughs> but yeah, wow. I mean, yeah, it, it's just one of those things where yeah, you know, it's um, Gonzalo Pineda. I mean, he has uh, stamped a little bit of his personality on this team because he was the uh, the vibes FC coach, you know, where you know he was uh, trying to uh, get get in with the fans. Uh, in a, in a good way, you know, where they uh, they were invited to the training grounds. They were, you know, all that uh, very early on. And wanted to build that connection. Mm. Now, the, uh, the subsequent season obviously didn't go to plan with the injuries, with the just, uh, yeah, kind of at times uh, perplexing play. But, I mean... Yes, this one-touch football, playing with urgency, this, uh, yeah, I mean, we're playing quickly, and that's how you break down a team at the Benz. They they can sit all they want. They or, can't, or at Charlotte Stadium. <laughs> right, exactly. It's, uh, you know, with that as well, that's uh, that's playing the type of football that we need to play yeah. on the road. If this is Pineda is Ball, I'm here for it. Devastating counterattack. Yeah, devastating counterattack football. Absolutely, like that's uh, and that's what you do, right? That, and that's what we've we've done in the past is devastating counterattack football and then assess the ball, keep the ball away from the opposition when we're up, and then they can't do anything about it. Yep. Basically, they're chasing shadows, and uh, that's how we can run up the score. And uh, yeah, I mean, especially we keep you know what of, we keep doing is scoring first, and you know what that does. That puts the team on their heels, and that opens them up. And then we've just been able to lethally destroy them and pick them apart after that. Yeah, exactly. And again, uh, like we said at the top of it, uh, you know, Portland, I don't think they played really, again, all that poorly with their weekend squad. Yeah, they actually, just in the beginning, I thought they were doing pretty darn well. I was actually, like, really impressed, yeah. uh, especially when they, yeah. I mean, I mean, they set the tone early with that goal that was called back which you know goodness gracious thank goodness that was but like that set the tone that really made me go like okay i guess they're here to play um and right. they were they were playing really well they were winning a lot of second balls it took us a little bit to grow into it but once we did it was yeah. it was off to the races oh yeah and what a different match it would have been if they actually didn't get that goal disallowed yeah i mean yeah we <laughs> It would have been uh, Bunker City, that's for sure. Yep. Um, it would have been very, very difficult to break down. I would, I would uh, definitely bet. So it's, yeah, wow. I mean, this match uh, played out everything pretty much to the T. Uh, Sands a Portland goal and a uh, and a Sosa uh, yellow card that was super duper soft yeah but, no uh, like i saw the I replay guess. on that that was a no call it should have been a no call he was he got the ball completely yeah. didn't even touch the guy uh he beat him to the and yeah it was just a bad call by the ref he missed it yeah and it seems like uh it probably was like a gimme for uh portland pretty much at that point like okay you know uh so you guys don't you know get on my back too much True. Uh, yeah because we were beating them up pretty good a lot of physicality yeah. from the team Right. And yeah, I mean, speaking of physicality, Marco Ibarra, just a beast in midfield again tonight, and uh, also getting beat up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, in a span of like three minutes, he got fouled like a bunch of times. I can't even count how many times. They were trying but, to uh, assert cards. themselves, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. And they were definitely, those were a lot more yellow card worthy than the, uh, the Sosa yellow card. So it's. Yeah, I mean, you know, Ted Uncle, we know the, we know what he is, and <laughs> like, uh, 
he luckily could not stop us from, uh, yeah, getting off on our races tonight and uh, pretty much running up the score that uh, I think we fully deserved. And again, should have had more. What's the uh, what's the chat saying? All right, so. Oh my goodness, a lot of people just flooded the chat real quick. Okay, GG, yeah, okay, we read that one. <laughs> Gazan should have had that, need to start looking for a good replacement for him. Yeah, that's a question about goalkeeper that has been kind of lingering over the last transfer window and everything. Um, Guzan's fine for now, I think. Um, granted, I think it's kind of looking as if like one foot out the door, maybe. Um, but it just I don't I don't see us positioning us ourselves for an immediate replacement. So they're having like maybe a, a year or two, probably two years for Guzan um, while they line up things. Yeah. I think so. it's uh it's see how we finished it out this year. You know, um, this year it's yeah. See how the Achilles heals and uh, you know if he's a liability or not. I think you know. He still looks like, pretty much so far anyway, the Brack exam that we know. Yeah, like, I and mean, he was he never good at stopping those, those like uh, far, <laughs> yeah. long distance th or those those short, quick, you know. Awesome distance. Yeah. yeah exactly. Pop shots. Like it's uh, that's his Achilles. Uh, I w no I'm curious to know just, if he yeah. uh, if he was if he, if that was his Achilles heel while he played in England too. I'm curious if that was like always his yeah. thing. Right, and that's the thing too. It's like uh, against a side that. Okay, well, uh, I mean, it's not like we bunker or anything. So that's the thing. It's like, you know, if, I mean, he played on some poor teams, uh, but also some, like, uh, decent ones with Aston Villa in the sense that, uh, you know, they were a cup team. So, yeah, there probably were times where, you know, the teams that he was on, he knows the dark arts. He knows that, you know, he's got to... Uh, waste some time but also when they do bunker that's how you beat a bunker sometimes is to shoot from distance and so i wonder yeah i mean if there are some aston villa fans from uh, way back <laughs> the street uh kevin egan where are you at but right. um, yeah uh <laughs> one of those yeah I mean, it'll, be, it'll be fascinating um to see how yeah how we we continue with brag exam all right, Gavin follows up and says, I want to see how we perform in Columbus next week without most of our starters and key players. The result could take part in, uh, in if we are back or not. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, well, actually, I'm not, I don't completely agree. I agree uh, that it'll tell us a lot, but I don't think it'll tell us whether or not we're back because I think the measure of whether or not we're back is what we look like with our starters. Um, exactly. I, I don't really think not we can our, rely... Yeah on the depth to carry the mantle of like a 3-0, 5-0 type or, you know, type victory like that. Um, but I think that they can get a result. They can get a draw away from home. They can maybe even etch out a victory, but it's not going to be like what we've been seeing. So there are definitely temper your expectations. But um, yeah, so I, you know, it's going to be interesting for sure, but I'm not expecting a whole lot. I'm expecting in a good way, a draw, and then in a negative way, like oh, like it maybe, and like a negative one or negative two differential loss or something. But I'm not gonna really consider it. Yeah. I'm not gonna really think about it. It's gonna be just you know that just sucks to suck because our boys are we have so many talented guys that we are more inflicted than most other teams about leaving losing our guys to international duty. So it is what it is. I don't really. I'm not gonna think about it. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna think about is uh, hopefully. Jonathan Nagby does not have a midfield masterclass. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to hope. Yeah, I mean, is, when uh, doesn't he? It's hard, <laughs> you know. Is, do you know so, where Lucas yeah, Zerayan uh, is going? Uh, Zerayan? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, I would assume he is. So, yeah, that's also going to be very dangerous. Because, uh, yeah, boy, can he, uh, boy, can that guy play. Yeah. So, yep. Uh... Let's uh, let's not think about next week too much, because uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's gonna hurt, I yeah. think. But uh, <laughs> not only our brains, but also just uh, yeah. I just next want week. us to. It's gonna be an unknown. As long as like we don't 
like really muck up our goal differential that badly, I'll be okay if we get her out of there with like a negative one or a zero. That'll be kind of my expectation. Yeah. What's the chat, Sam? Corey says, not going to lie, I chuckled a little when Almada missed that goal. He can get 30 yards out, but not the 18. I mean, I mean, this guy, <laughs> there's nothing he can't do. Um, I mean, there was this one part where he must have been like, yeah, like 30, 35 yards out. And Kevin, e or uh, the person commenting next to Kevin Egan in the booth was like, I don't think Tiago Almada can make it from this distance. Can he? And then Egan went, I, I don't know. I don't know if we can say that. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. that was hilarious. They were both like, is he that good? So, yeah, it's scaring everyone, man. I mean, I tweeted I tweeted out, this is this is Almada free. And then he did it. I was I was saying tongue of tongue and cheek a little bit, but uh, holy crap. Like, <laughs> yeah, that that was uh, that that dispelled some disbelief uh, that anybody had. I mean, just and to put it top bits, it wasn't even like a little bit like uh, inside the crossbar you know, too, closer to the middle. Yeah, exactly. It was as top bins as you could hit it, like top corner without. Just yeah, oh my god! The, and it ain't no accident because he's been doing that regularly. It's yeah. insane. He's yeah. so dialed like, in. It's ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it, it's uh, it's also hilarious. Like uh, any of the other players, even like standing next to him on a free kick, just like come on, man. Like, we, we know who's taking this bet. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's like Messi stepping oh. up, and he's he's think he's acting like Messi, yeah. so. Right. I mean, it's that. It's like Arujo or uh, Lennon stepping next to him. It's just like, I mean, I, yeah, we've seen Lennon hit a, a really, you know, decent free kick. Uh, it wasn't quite as, like, you know, finessed and uh, controlled as Almada can do it. But, you know, it's just, it's a different level. It's just ridiculous. And, yeah, we, uh, of course, a lot of people are like, okay, how much? When is he leaving? Yep. I mean, yeah. Those, those are the golden questions. It's, so, yeah, uh, champagne problems. Champagne problems, exactly. I mean, yeah. We we keep getting these uh, South American tens. And, uh, yeah, you know, we we eventually need to probably keep one to <laughs> play in the league a little longer, actually. Yeah. But, uh, or, you know, get one of these uh, honey Mukhtars or, you know, yeah. these type of players that want to stay in MLS. All right, so Elliot Beaven says, Wiley giving me Reese James vibes. What do you think about that, uh, AJ? On the other side, yes, uh, interesting. Um, of course, not playing wing back or right back, uh, but straight up winger. So, I mean, I can kind of see what you mean because, yeah, Reese James was on a uh, really good scoring, uh, scoring kick for a good bit when he was healthy. So, yeah, I can, I can maybe see it a little bit, but... Um, I don't know. I think it's like a. It, it's not quite this because like uh, Alfonso Davies, his game is a little different. Yeah, you know, like Wiley is not quite the tripler that uh, Alfonso Davies. Is. Alfonso Davies is but, like a uh, top eleven in the world player too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, his ball striking is pretty good uh, in terms of Caleb Wiley. Uh, and that's the thing. It's like yeah, we don't know exactly quite how good his uh, his crossing is. He had a wonderful cross today to Giamakis. Yes, exactly. That <laughs> we do at least today, but uh, on a consistent basis, yeah, yeah, we'll just have to see. Yeah, again, that was and, exactly uh, my point. Like, I have no idea if he can keep this up. This is—is is he hitting way yeah. over his weight class or what? Here, I'm—I'm I, I'm not looking forward to a possible regression to the mean for his behavior. So we'll see. <laughs> His behavior. How dare he? <laughs> this, uh, this, this, this disgusting behavior on the pitch. Yes. Ah, oh, it's it's nasty. I mean, these these goals are nasty. I mean, like it's one touch with a lot of these. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a striker's touch. Like, yeah. you, you can see. Like, there's confidence when he's not taking a touch. He's just running onto it, hitting it. I feel like previous years he'd take a touch. And then he'd, you know, fumble it. But here he's right. just 
so confident. Oh yeah. So that's that's what uh that's what they you know they tell a lot of strikers. Just, uh, yeah, you know you gotta be able to you know hit it one time, and uh, that's the the mark of the confidence. And yeah, he he is doing a job. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, and then Aruju, you know let's uh let's give some some dap for this uh for his goal too. I mean uh basically yeah. You know, I think it was what uh, Amada found him from a uh, middle of the pitch type of uh, lofted ball, and Adaruju was able to dribble his man and you know get to juggle uh, it like a three times wider. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I mean, yeah, really well taken. I mean, I think that's what that's what we want to see from Adaruju is when he's in the box. It's a lot better looking shots. Yeah. Like it's, uh, yeah. you know, it was almost opposite. It's like, uh, yeah, Arujo only takes shots in the box, uh, and Almada only takes shots outside. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <Thanks for this. laughs> but, uh, but also, yeah, I mean, um, you know, Derek Etienne on uh, Almada's goal, uh, you know, a good ball in, where Almada was able to to finish really clinically as well. I mean, just man. You know, we uh, we just want to see more of this. Yeah. And yeah, uh, that's the the type of stuff. Uh, and I mean, I think Sadich as well. I think had a really really good match. Yeah. He uh, he was able to pretty much be that guy, that distributor, to find those guys out wide, to uh, just play really tidy, and you know, also be a little combative uh, when necessary. So I mean, yeah, Hosatu out didn't really miss a beat. It's uh, it's good stuff. I mean, that's uh, you know, that's that type of uh, you know, next man up that we need in order to be successful. And yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we don't have an international break. Uh, yeah, that's to silly. Get some of these guys. Yeah, like, yeah, it's gonna be. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, again, let's not talk about uh <laughs> next week. <laughs> but yeah. uh, <laughs> yes, I mean this match uh. Yeah, I mean, it's one of our most comprehensive wins in our history, I would say. I mean... Landmark. You know, sans Landmark. the... Yeah, sans that, uh, sans that one little mark. One little mark uh, or play. The goal. Yeah. And, like, even the... I mean, let's put this up to some of the other, you know, just uh, killings that we've... Uh, Done to other teams. Uh, New England Revolution. I mean, that was you know, support on <laughs> brought on It's just like yeah, that's uh, that's just how deep of a team that was. But um, I mean, let's see what else. Uh, what were some other just blowouts? That's. I mean, we. Uh, I think we beat I LAFC five 0 one time. Do that we? Was, really? Uh, That's incredible. I completely forgot about yeah, that. Yeah. In their first year, Romario Williams came on. And, uh, yeah. It was basically, you know, LAFC, uh, you know, still getting their bearings. And, you know, a team that wants to, to play. That, that's how you beat teams that, um, you know, that want to play, basically. The, if a team bunkers, then it's a lot harder to play and, and run up a score. But... You know, it, it seemed like Portland as well. Like they, yeah, I think they didn't really bunker, and that was to their detriment a little bit. But mm -hmm. uh, it also was, yeah. I mean, we we were just playing too fast against them. That you know they didn't have time to bunker really at times. Yeah, so, yeah. There were some early balls over the top that, man, <laughs> you know that's like that early service that uh, Joseph Martinez used to beast off of. But, um, yeah, you know, obviously he, a little bit, stopped making as many of those type of runs uh, in the, you know, latter years of his uh, tenure here. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go to the chat one more time, and maybe let's, uh, let's spin that, that wheel. All right, yeah, I think age is getting a little right. cold. I'm just going to shoot off a bunch of yeah. things. I'm going to read through a bunch right now because we got a lot. So um, Cool. Corey says, not going to lie. I chuckled. Oh, yeah, I already read that one. Um, yeah. I got to, Connor says I got to apologize to Pineda because he has found the tactics which 
have us playing exciting soccer. After that first match, I said he's out of his death, but I was wrong. Fair. It takes a big man to admit when they have made a mistake. Um, yeah, I apologize as well. Gavin says, I also apologize because after the Austin match last season, I went off on Pineda. I mean, like, it's fair to have gotten off on him in certain points, but I think that it was premature to really come to any conclusions from last season. I think it was kind of a wait and see mentality, and we've waited and we've seen so far, and it's so good. Um, let's see, what else is there? Did anyone else have problems with the Apple stream? Yeah, in the beginning, for the first 10 minutes, it was going in and out quite a bit. It was almost unwatchable. Um, that was really obnoxious. Luckily, it stabilized um, after like 10 or so minutes of it wavering. So that was a little annoying. Luckily, nothing really big happened. Um, yeah. Gavin says... Oh, yeah, I saw some Sorry. comments. Oh, no, you're fine. I, I saw some comments on Twitter. From people saying, I wish yeah. I could watch the game. I was like trying to figure out why there was anything. But, yeah, good. <laughs> Gavin says Atlanta vs. St. Louis City MLS Cup 2023. It's a very weird, real possibility. Elliot Beaven says finally Gigi got his goal. I, absolutely. You called it. Zorro. You called it, Michael. Yeah. Played with a real nerve, speed, and intensity. Free-flowing ATL football at its finest. Wiley, Amada, Gigi, Arujo all terrorized MLS defenses. Amada's technique is so pure and straight out of Fuerte Apache. Absolutely. That's a very well put. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he has a wand for a right foot, and it is uh, just placing passes just delicately in front of these uh, these other players that are making runs. And all they really have to do is, yeah, take the touch, put it away. Mm-hmm. It's like. Uh, so, like, is it? Is it I, I know there's some other people that are uh, saying, okay, yeah, uh, Marcelino Moreno, you know, the squad now, uh, it's less where they're occupying the same spaces. I think it's a bit of that, but yeah, what do you think? What do you think, Mike? Is it uh, is he coming into his own? Is it more he's got the space to operate? Uh, what do you think? With Tiago Amato versus Marcelino Moreno? Uh, in terms of like why he's going off i think i think like i think you nailed it on the head earlier when you said we we just have more outlets for him now uh he's an operator and he really didn't have any people to operate with last season um and i think now he's he actually has a like a a a plethora of options and he's so good at picking his head up and finding that pass that it's like anytime he has the ball and does that it's a problem for the other team because he's going to find a runner. He's going to find someone who breaks and is off the ball and completely, you know, makes some kind of run that just co- collapses the other team's defense. Like, and he'll find that. And he'll, he does it like every time. It's like a master class at doing it today. They were, it was giving yeah. their defense fits. It, I mean, he, like we were saying, the, the scoreline could have been, uh, you know, maybe 10-1 or something like that. Uh, he could have had like a bundle, like half a dozen assists. Really, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it uh, the kid is ridiculous. So Fern Solo gives a really interesting uh, comment here. Great game! I can't wait to beat the Red Bulls. So I I really really want to beat the Red Bulls in the regular flipping season. Jeez, can we please I just know, put right? that to bed? Yeah, this uh, this might be the antidote. I mean, yeah, we uh, you know we needed a player that could uh, place passes on on them, uh, and yeah, you know the way that we were pressing early this match and counter pressing as well when we lost the ball, it was yeah. I think uh, that's something that is a it's a good medicine for a team that plays like New York Rebels. So yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see. All right, let me continue reading these out so I can get you out of there, AJ, because, uh, yeah, I know you're cold. You. <laughs> uh, Baraka <laughs> says, pure Atlanta Waffle House football. Absolutely. Connor says, the, the goalkeeper situation is going to rely on uh, We got to pause there. Sure. We got to pause there. Uh, like, that was probably the most ridiculous sentence that anyone has ever said. Baraka says that. <laughs> yeah, like the Street Fighter. It was pure Baraka. Atlanta United Waffle House football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
That's that's great. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Uh, Connor says the goalkeeper situation is going to rely on development of the keepers in the academy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have some guys in the wings on the twos and stuff too. Um, so yeah, exactly. that's, yeah. that's Justin Garstas, uh, yeah, Vincent Reyes. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned on the streams, a couple of guys that, yeah, you know, very early on in their career, they, they probably some good, uh, you know, heirs to the job. But, uh, I think obviously Raguzan with his international experience, uh, not only with a national team, but also in the premier league, like, Dude, let's just be real. We got lucky with him. Like, as sure. much, yeah. exactly. Like we we saw last year, the difference. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it, he's not he's not a schmo. He's not some schmuck that uh, can't play. Like he's he is aging and he's got his his flaws. But yeah. Yep, so Zorar says, unfortunately, opposition managers will watch this game and set up with suffocating low blocks. Almada is the creator in chief to unlock defenses tonight. We watched a beautiful game. Um, like, yeah, I think so. I mean, but that just, to me, means that they're respecting us now. They're afraid of what we can do, which is a good sign we'd be doing the right thing. So, yeah, I hope it makes them change their game up so they aren't playing the game that they want to play. Um, that at least kind of gives us a bit of an advantage. It's just on us then to just have the talent and the foresight to unlock the defenses that are trying to uh, bunker up on us. So we'll see. We'll see how it works. It'll be an interesting chess game that Pineda and our team plays against um, some of these teams that will have a chance to see how Atlanta has been hurting everyone up until this. Right. But I think that's the the recipe tonight was how you play against a little block was one touch football. Play it fast. Play it with urgency. Yeah. Lots of movement. That's how you beat a low block. So, I mean, that's a that's a big, tasty little uh, tasty little appetizer for uh, you know, the low blocks that are coming. So good. And Let's, I like it. Yeah. Um, so Connor says, "I love our backup left back is a better finisher than Aruju." <laughs> well. I mean, we'll uh, we'll see at the end of the season how that goes. Um, let's yeah. see. Corey... Let's get some some major props to Luis Araujo and his cross field ball to get to Caleb Wiley. So that ball that got to Yakubakis. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that that was one of those like that's again how you beat a low block. Like they had no chance. It was. Yeah, they, they yeah. couldn't get back. We did what we wanted to them, and they just had to, you know, they couldn't do anything, yeah. yeah. Um, Corey says, just as, li just as long as Wiley isn't another Andrew Carlton and let fame get to his head, then I think we'll be all right. I Wiley seems quite humble to me, so we'll see. I, I yeah, hope exactly. you're, I hope, you know, he does not go down that route, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, Vamos yeah. Atlanta. I, I would say yep. the, the uh, sorry, yeah, but uh, I would say from that, uh, that documentary, that little quick little quick doc from LA United on uh, his family, Wiley's family. Uh, I would say it's a lot different of an upbringing. I would say they yeah. uh, they seem a lot more humble, even though they're from Morning Side, which is a pretty affluent area in, in uh, Atlanta and in, uh, in Georgia. But still, um, you know, like they're a, a business owner, they're a small business owner. They uh, you know they have some humble beginnings, but also yeah, the whole like. A uh, little soccer pitch that they built on the side of their restaurant. I think they're a lot more, uh, yeah, more humble yeah. family than uh, than the other ones. Yeah, the West King says uh, the snow game against Minnesota. Oh, that was a good one to remember. Yeah, because we were asking about um, kind of like big blowout games, um, and I think uh, AJ is having a little bit of without the snow, but a similar amount of cold. He's having his cold game right now tonight. <laughs> Um, yep. Gavin yep. says, uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Gavin says, I remember the mini vlog from AJ in 2018 when we won 5-0. That was a great one. The comeback from San Jose. Um, we could have San Jose scheduled every year because every game has absolute chaos. That's true. Uh, let's go ATL. This team is looking exciting. Let's see if they can build off this type of win. That's right. Ryan videos. Um, Ryan videos. That sounds familiar. Eddie Ruiz yeah. says the switches across the field were on point today as well. They absolutely were. Uh, Gavin Marshall says 
I hope to comment on the Red Bulls page saying congrats on beating us in the regular season again. Oh, wait, April Fools. Ah, it is on April Fools Day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Zorar says oh, Wiley and Almada will be on the Euro shopping list come the summer. Absolutely. Oh, well, Wiley maybe. Almada definitely. Again, we just have to see if Wiley can keep this up. I'm not convinced we he can yet, but I, I sincerely hope he can. I hope this squad has the opportunity to fulfill their potential. Gigi will score bucket loads with this level of service. I really hope so. And then we'll round it out with saying, Elliot, uh, if they get sold, they return on loan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. That's what it is. That's what it's got to be. Because, yeah, this uh, this team definitely has potential. We won't say anything yet. <laughs> let's, not, uh, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. It's match four. But... Yeah, I mean, you can see some pieces coming together and some pieces that aren't even fully integrated. I mean, Etienne Jr. and Yakumakis aren't even fully integrated. Yeah, so let's see. Let's get to the the wheel now. All right, thanks for everyone yeah, sticking we, around. We, yeah, we got to give this a name, uh, this yeah. wheel a name, but uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, or if anyone has any recommendations, shoot them in the chat or shoot them in the Discord. Be luck, uh, happy to hear them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to this um, wheel, and we're going to spin it and see which one it lands on, either me or AJ this week. Oh, when... you know, we should do five. We should call it the five-stripe wheel. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. So I think today we have like six or seven. Um... Yep. Oh, well. <laughs> um, so let me do this one real quick. I need to reset it up actually. That's fun. Okay. So let me do, let me see what happens if I do this. Okay, yeah, you can see it now. Um, so this is just to determine which one of us is going to have to do one of the things. So please land yeah, on I'm AJ. I'm completely in the dark. I'm trusting you. It's, I'm trusting it's you. on me. Great. Good. <laughs> yeah. Super. All right. Yeah, congratulations. We have a winner. Oh. I'm not winning anything here. This is going to be a bad thing. So um, <laughs> let me see if I can bring it back to this. And then I'm going to try and fix this while you guys talk for a second. Okay. Yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, again, uh, I'm completely in the dark uh, on this because I can't see the wheel. I can only <laughs> see pretty much uh, what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, cannot see the stream, but... They'll, yeah. keep, they'll keep me honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good. <laughs> I mean, I trust you, but it is... <laughs> Just making it up real quick. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, what was it? Um, music we hate is one of them. Yeah. And then. Uh, da, da, da. And. Yeah, read it up real quick. Yeah. I just I'm just gonna call them dumb things right now. We can fix it later because I just want to get it out there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. Definitely read read it out for the stream. Yeah. Uh, just in case they're like you know just uh, only listening or something. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, all right. So here you can see it on the stream now if you're looking. Um, whatever this lands on, we're gonna I'm gonna have to do because it's on me first time. And of course, it's the spicy challenge. So the spicy challenge that one is AJ is gonna get me one of those. Uh, like ghost pepper chips. The and packy gonna... one chip challenge things. <sighs> so I'm gonna have to eat one of those while we do the next episode. So that's gonna be fun. Oh boy! I uh, oh can't boy. wait. It's gonna be a great time. <laughs> um, yeah. that's really starting things off hard. I thought it was gonna be a little bit easier getting into this, yeah. but we are yeah. we are where we are. Uh, <laughs> so to give you an idea of what some of the other ones are, so we have special talent. So that means, um. Each one of us, Mark, AJ, and I have some kind of special talent, and we'll film it, and then we'll air it on one of the episodes if one of us lands on that. Um, dressing up, that one is we you go to a game, and you have to be filmed um, dressing up in some kind, or doing an episode, um, doing it with some kind of silly whatever costume or something on. Um, rival kit is, for the next episode, you have to wear your rival's kit. And this is basically specifically for AJ and 
mark because they both support rival EPL teams. So they will have to switch their Chelsea and Arsenal jerseys if one of them lands on that. Um, one of them is... Uh, or it's Michael, then uh, maybe it's uh, Charlotte or... Yeah, we'll find something for me. Like, uh, no, no, no one I know has an Orlando jersey, understandably. So we'll see yeah. what we can do about that. Um, eating bad, I just wrote that because it's like, you're going to find something that we all had things that we don't like to eat. For me, it's licorice. I don't like the taste of licorice. Um, AJ has something. I think it was bananas because he's weird bananas. like that. And then Mark has something as well. And I forget what that was. But basically, if they land on that, they're going to have to do that one of the episodes. And last one is drinking a liquor, and that's probably going to have something to do with whatever team we're playing. Try and find a drink that is like for like we're playing Chicago. Whatever sh- drink is famous in Chicago, one of us will have to do like a shot of that liquor or a shot of that. Or just have a, a drink of whatever drink that is. Um, and I think that that's and the music we hate also is one. Um, they have to film whoever lands on that has to film themselves listening to one of the song a song from an artist that they literally just cannot stand and just see what their face looks like for however long it takes so those are the types of things you can look forward to seeing us make our fools out of ourselves um if you're into that kind of thing and if you want to suggest any and you you really want us to do them uh we may have ways for you to do that in the future right and definitely uh yeah leave them in the chat right now but also maybe leave them in the uh the comments after this live video uh posts and that would be a great way for us to uh, kind of gather some of what you guys want to see. But uh, yeah, you know we're trying to uh, trying to mix it up, keep it interesting. So uh, yep, all for you guys. So let all us right. know in those comments below. Yeah. All right. So that's that will uh, do it for us here. I just want to get AJ home because he's going to probably turn into an icicle soon. So um, that'll do it for us. AJ, you want to sign us off? Yes, indeed. Uh, well, yeah, Michael, let us know where the good people can find you. So you can actually see it now on the stream <laughs> at the bottom, MW underscore ATLETD Fan TV. That's the Twitter. Um, just hit me up there. Um, I post a lot of wonderful, hilarious, super cool things that everyone wants to read all the time, and no one hates it ever. I definitely haven't already gotten into like several Twitter spats with random people who have no idea what they're talking about. So if you're interested you in have, that kind uh, of thing. You have Kristen, you have Kristen yourself to, uh, to Twitter. It's, yeah. it's a writer passage. Yeah. So, so. Uh, fantastic. Exactly. And so, uh, yeah, you guys know where to follow us. So for to like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And for Mike, I'm AJ. Thank you so much for watching. 